Hi guys, it's Just Monis Fiction, and welcome to the start of a reading vlog. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I don't read very many historical romance books. The only historical romance books I've even talked about on my channel have been the Duke and I and the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. Well, recently I was watching some romance booktubers do reading sprints, and they were talking about dark historical romance. I did not realize that was a thing, so I feel like if I'm going to enjoy historical romance, it will probably be dark historical romance. Now, Jess from Peace Love Books was super nice and actually gave me some romance book recommendations. So over this week, I'm going to try to read two dark historical romance books. The first one is The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Byrne. So I believe this is Captor Captive. I don't know too much else about it, but a lot of people seem to love it. I keep getting messages on Instagram that this is their favorite historical romance, so very excited about that one. And then the other one is In Bed with the Devil. I forget the author. I'll leave it on the screen. But I believe the main love interest is a murderer. So it should be a good time. So come along with me as I try out dark historical romance. All right, so it's about three o'clock on Monday. I just got home from work and I actually read around 13 or 14 chapters of The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Byrne. So I'm actually listening to this via audio. The audio narrator is doing an amazing job and then I'm kind of following along physically when I can. So far, I don't know how I feel about it. I think I'm gonna like it, I'm not sure. So it starts off in the past, we're following these two orphans, Thera and Dugan, and they're just really adorable. They're, as soon as they meet each other, they're inseparable and Farrah teaches Dugan how to read and then Dugan takes Farrah on all these like cute little adventures around the orphanage and they have this like fake marriage ceremony that they both take very seriously and they're very cute. Um, so then everything's fine until this higher up in the orphanage, I think it's a priest or a father, ends up sexually assaulting Farrah and obviously Farrah is very scared. She runs to Dugan and they decide they're gonna try to escape the orphanage. Unfortunately, they get caught, and when this happens, Dugan actually kills the guy responsible for trying to sexually assault Farah. So then we jump to the future. We assume that Dugan either died, um, he was hit during this attack, or was like put in jail. And now Farah is this 27-year-old woman, and she actually has a job working at Scotland Yard. She's a widow. And this was the one surprising thing to me. I feel like in historical romance, I didn't realize women could have so much autonomy. I read Bridgerton and I feel like women were more kept as like just like housewives. Um, so I'm really liking this so far. Like I like the fact that Farrah is really her own person and that might just be because she's a widow and she's allowed to do that, but still, I'm liking it. So anyway, we go to Scotland Yard and there's this big mob outside and Farrah's trying to figure out what's going on and we find out that this very revered criminal has been captured and it's Dorian Blackwell. So when Farrah goes into the interview room, Dorian kind of starts staring at her and then he ends up being released because Scotland Yard doesn't have enough evidence against him. So that night, Dorian Blackwell ends up kidnapping Farrah and taking her to Scotland. So I think I know what like the twist is, if it's even supposed to be a twist, but she gets to Scotland and wakes up and then Dorian has this proposition for her and is like, I know who you really are. You're really this heiress and this person is pretending to be you and they actually put a hit out on you and all this dramatic stuff. And he's like, a way to stop this is if you marry me because he wants to become an Earl and he needs a title. And she originally does not want to do this because she already married Dugan and Dugan we find out has died in prison and she doesn't want to like break up, not break up with him, but like not break his heart, but you know what I mean doesn't want to dishonor him by marrying someone else, but then she realizes she really wants a family, so she tells Dorian Blackwell that the only way she'll marry him is if he sleeps with her, which was interesting. Didn't see that coming. But then we also find out that Dorian has an issue with people touching him and he doesn't like physical touch, so I feel like that's gonna end up breaking my heart. I don't know what happened to him to make him like that. I know it's gonna be really sad. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much where I am. They just got married and now they're both kind of thinking about uh, consummating the marriage, and that's where I stopped reading. So it's pretty good so far. Not a lot of spice. Um, obviously, I figure it's gonna happen, hopefully in the next few chapters, but I'm engaged enough that I'm gonna keep reading. I am liking it so far. So I'm actually liking it more than I thought I was going to. So anyway, that is where I am at with this book. I will be reading another probably 15 chapters tonight, and then I'll probably finish it tomorrow morning. And then while I was gone, I got book mail and I figured I would share it with you guys because it is the adult fairy loot box. So this is actually for May. So if you don't want to see what the May book, 
book looks like. Uh, skip ahead, I'll leave timestamps down below. But we shall see. I've actually been very disappointed with the last two Fairy Loot books. Um, here. So this is the first one. This is the Atlas Six. Let's see if I can get the focus. From Fairy Loot. And I don't know, it's fine. I just feel like they could have done so much more with it. I actually really do like the inside of it. Like, I like the picture. I just, the book itself is kind of boring. And then, this is the City of Dusk, which I haven't read yet. I do really want to read, but it looks very similar to The Atlas Six. I don't know, it's just, black and white, they're not really doing anything super original here, so I'm really hoping this next book looks a little better. I'm pretty sure it's Book of Night by Holly Black, but we will see. So, all right, Into the Shadows is the theme. Let's see if I'm... All right, there it is. And it's black. <laughs> Big surprise. Okay, so apparently adult means we don't like color. All right, so this is what it looks like. I mean, it's pretty. It's not, I don't hate it. It's kind of like a matte actually feeling, which I do like, but like no sprayed edge, or it has sprayed edges, but no stencil edges. I feel like they could have done some like really cool stuff. I don't know. Let's see if with the, oh, the inside does look cool. So. And then a quote on the back. I actually like the naked hardcover better than the dust jacket. There we go. So that's kind of cool. I do like the artwork. They do a really good job with artwork. Yeah, that looks. So yeah, I don't know. I might, I'm gonna give Fairy Loot one more try. We'll see what the next adult book is, but if it's another just black and white one, I might cancel my subscription. I don't know. I just, I haven't been loving it. But anyway, so I'm gonna read a little bit more, um, run some errands, and then I will check in with you guys a little bit later. Wanna be free of this heart, yeah. Wanna feel your arms around me. I need you more. Need you here more than I would like to admit. Let's forget about tomorrow. Yeah, should I hide away forever? Should I close my eyes and never again hold you tight, call you mine? All right, guys. So it's actually pretty early on Tuesday. I had a surprise half day from work, which is always amazing. Um, I actually got out of recess duty and it's like 85 degrees outside. So I am super pumped about that. I have second grade for recess. It's my least favorite part of my job. But I did finish The High Women by Kerrigan Byrne on my morning commute in and I was pleasantly surprised. I did really enjoy it. So I'm gonna keep this spoiler free, but where we left off, Dorian and Farah had just gotten married. So they end up consummating their marriage. Um, there's some spicy time, he ties her up, all good. So then the rest of the book is really just finding out more about like Dorian's staff, his backstory, and then Dorian and Farah are trying to get her title and inheritance back from the people that stole it. So all of that was really fun. Um, and then the end, there was this like very dramatic scene that I wasn't expecting and I really, really did like it. I loved their romance. I thought it was absolutely adorable. I thought this was very well written. My one critique with this book is I wish it was a little bit darker. So I was, when I went into this, I saw it compared to Sea of Ruin, or for some reason in my head, that's what I was comparing it to. Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, much darker than this. And this was dark. I just wish we got a little bit more from Dorian's backstory. Like we know he doesn't like to be touched and I don't know what this says about me as a person, but I kind of want to know like exactly like what torture he went through that has now made him the way he is. But overall, like I said, that might just be me. I did really enjoy this, enough so that I actually messaged uh, my romance has no limits on Instagram, and I know she read most of the series. 
and I asked her if it was worth continuing. She says she's rated all of the books she's read over four stars. So I did order The Hunter and I will hopefully be reading that next week and I will continue with the series because I did enjoy it. Now I started in bed with the devil on my drive home. I'm not very far in and I don't know how I feel about it yet. This is feeling a lot more historical, if that makes any sense. Like I know they're both historical romances, but just the way it's like written. So we're following Luke, who was this young boy. He ended up, I think he was like a pauper, like he was very poor, but he ended up killing this man that was trying to hurt his very good friend, Franny. And then after that, when he's about to go to jail, the man that he's killed's father says that Luke is actually his grandson and Luke lies, pretends to be his grandson. So then Luke becomes like an Earl or whatever the royalty is, I'm bad with titles. Anyway, he becomes part of like the noble class. So Franny, he's always had a crush on the girl he saved and he asks her to marry him and she says no way, she does not want to be part of that world and he's just like devastated. Now Luke does have a reputation of being this like evil guy and our other character is Catherine who I absolutely love. So she's super willful, she's 22, and her father unfortunately has, I believe he has epilepsy and he is almost like comatose. So she's pretty much able to do whatever she wants. She does have a brother, but he's like off calivanting. So she is just living the life. Um, unfortunately, one of her friends is being abused by her husband. So Catherine tries to enlist Luke to kill the husband and then Luke decides that he's gonna use Catherine in order to get Franny to marry him. So that's where I'm at in The Devil, In Bed with the Devil. So like I said, I'm liking it so far. I'm not really sure how it's supposed to play out. I don't know if uh, Luke is trying to date Catherine in order to make Franny jealous or like what's gonna go on there, but we will see. So I'm gonna read that for a little bit. I have some errands to run again today. So I will either check in with you guys later tonight or I will pop in in the morning. So this is gonna be my final update and then a very small book haul. So I finished In Bed with the Devil yesterday and I ended up really enjoying it. So I'm gonna keep this very vague and very spoiler free. But where I left off, Catherine was going to Luke and she was asking Luke to murder her best friend's abusive husband. And in return, Catherine was gonna teach Farah, the woman that Luke is desperately in love with, how to be a high society lady. Now, obviously, these two end up falling in love. So Catherine and Luke end up forming a relationship and that was probably what I enjoyed most about this book compared to The Highwaymen. I feel like in The Highwaymen, it wasn't as fleshed out a romance because Dugan and Farrah already had such a strong connection from when they were children, like they got married as kids. So they really didn't have to focus as much on the relationship. I loved seeing Catherine slowly fall for the scoundrel that she wasn't supposed to have a romantic relationship with. And it was just really fun. Now I do wish both books were a little bit darker, however they both did have some very dark themes and I enjoyed them enough that I ended up picking up some more historicals. So what prompted this was I was actually looking for a physical copy of In Bed with the Devil and it was like $23 on Amazon. So I called my used bookstore, they said they had it in stock, it was 50 cents and then they had a bunch of other books. Devil and Desire by Lorraine Heath, I think this is the second book in the series and I think this is Jack's book, so very interested. And then I was also able to get Surrender to the Devil, which is Franny's book, which I'm so curious about. So I cannot wait to jump into these. And then I also got Hearts of Flame. A few of you recommended uh, this book to me. I think this is Captor Captive. And if it is, that's very exciting. Um, one of my favorite tropes. 
And then the woman at the bookstore was so sweet. So I brought this up and she actually gave it to me for free because I told her I was very new to historical romance and she was saying that everyone needs to read this and that this was like one of the first like groundbreaking historical romance books. So that was very nice of her. And then last up, I did get one Kerrigan Burton book and is A Dark and Stormy Night. I think this is book seven, but like I said, uh, the owner of the bookstore said if they get any more Kerrigan Burton, they'll hold it for me, but super excited to jump into that. So overall, I will say this vlog was a success. I enjoyed all of the books I read, so I look forward to reading more historical romance in the future. <laughs>